This is an introduction to Manley Palmer Hall's short book, The Sacred Magic of the Kabbalah. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the introduction and I'm going to talk about part one, which is keys of the sacred wisdom. And then in the second part to this, I will talk about the mystery of the numbers and the power of invocation and the science of the sacred names. In Manley P. Hall's short book, The Sacred Magic of the Kabbalah, Hall says that the religious teachings of all nations can be divided into two general divisions, the exoteric and the esoteric. The exoteric is the religion of the common people, while the esoteric is the religion of the wise and initiated few. The esoteric faith rarely ever appears publicly in the world. It is always covered with the cloak of ritual and symbolism because this is necessary to keep it occulted from those who are not initiated. The initiates and the masters study the subtle law of the invisible nature, which are beyond the veil. The physical body conceals the spirit, and it is the same with religion. The visible, tangible body is for the materialist and those who are wedded to form, while the invisible body is for the few initiated ones who can realize its existence. These initiates, because of their special training, become mystics. Within each religion is hidden what Hall calls a living, divine, glowing coal or glowing radiance, and the mystics seek to reveal its wisdom through spiritual transmutation and the practice of alchemy. By doing so, the teachings of the Bible can be understood in a new light. The study of Kabbalah holds the key to unlocking the true mysteries of these scriptures. In Part 1, Keys of the Sacred Wisdom, Hall says that anyone who would study Kabbalah must first cleanse the body and the soul, because if this is not done, the very powers which the student draws to him in his studies will destroy him. The student must be robed in the garments of purity so that he is prepared to receive the light that will come with spiritual power. The student must develop the virtue of patience, for the path of the true mystic is slow and arduous. The initiate must be focused upon self-improvement and unselfish service in order to walk the white path. Hall clarifies that the ancient Kabbalistic magic of the philosophers had nothing to do with fortune-telling, divination, or numerology. The student who would strive to find out information such as his or her lucky days, the length of their lives, their birth paths, for example, will not succeed in uncovering the mysteries because they are neither prepared nor worthy to receive the sacred teachings. In order to receive the sacred teachings, it is necessary for the student to have acquired the qualities of reverence and obedience. Approaching the great mystery requires simplicity of heart and clarity of mind. The student of ancient wisdom must accept the obligations that come with such a serious study. The sacred truth of the Kabbalah will never be revealed to those who seek only thrills or power. Those who would do so are disciples of what Hall calls the Black Path. The secrets of the Kabbalah can lead to illumination only if the seeker has the highest motives and purest ideals. Only then will the knowledge of the sacred science and secrets of the soul be revealed and entrusted to the student. According to Hall, it is crucial that man stop trying to mold the universe according to his own desires. Instead, he must realize there is a divine plan and he should mold himself to that plan. This requires a balanced intellect and a harmonized body because this is the way to keep emotional excesses in check. The study of the Hebrew alphabet is part of the study of Kabbalah. In the Hebrew alphabet, there are 22 letters, and these make up the fundamentals of Kabbalistic knowledge. Each of the letters is composed of tiny flames joined together in various combinations. The number of flames to each letter range from 1 to 4, and these letters form the basis of what Hall terms a great fire-born doctrine. The primitive figure or hieroglyph of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Yod. This is the first letter of the Hebrew name Jehovah. Yod is the great fire flame that holds the other flames together to form the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. 
The fire flames represent living forces that are the life-giving forces of nature. These flames can be combined together in various ways. The differentiation we see in the world is the result of this combination of spiritual energies. The vowel points of the Hebrew alphabet represent divine elements that were considered to be too sacred to write on paper. The vowels symbolize the life centers that give expression to the consonants or forms. In the same way, spiritual energies in the human body, which are invisible, vitalize our physical bodies. Just as every word must have vowels within it, so every physical body must also contain these invisible vital forces. According to the sacred teachings of the Kabbalists, there are two great worlds, the macrocosm and the microcosm or little cosmos. The macrocosm is the higher or superior world and it rules the divine man or macro prosophis. The lower world is the little cosmos and it is the lesser reflection of the greater world. The archetype of the greater man, Adam Cadman, who is made in the image of his father, the great man, contains both the nature of the human, or lower, and the nature of the divine, the higher. Therefore, in order for man to unravel the mystery of his own being, he must understand both nature and God. The way to do this in Kabbalistic terms is to find the sacred meaning of the 22 hieroglyphic letters and vowel points of the Hebrew alphabet. Another important concept of the sacred wisdom of the Kabbalah is the Tetragrammaton. There are a number of mysterious forces that occur in nature, and they are correlated to the letters of this divine name. The Tetragrammaton, in turn, is related to the four elements, which can be combined into 72 combinations. These 72 combinations are referred to as the ministering angels or intelligences that exist within the life-given forces and animate them. The consonants represent the form and the vowels represent the consciousness. Hall says the following about the vowels and the consonants. These vowel centers or life poles are evolved by the lives we live. And as their position and power are all important in interpreting the message of life, we lose the faculty of discernment when our lives are out of harmony. The words of life lose their meaning because the vowels are replaced. In the same way, if we have a certain vowel, center of life or interest, that is overemphasized, we have a habit of placing it in everything that we see. As a result of this undue emphasis, we distort nature and become incapable of discrimination. Every living thing is made of a sound, a color, and form. These differ in their rates of vibration. Some of these rates of vibration our ears cannot detect but they exist nevertheless. Hall describes man as a human radio. The world is filled with positive and negative energies that are all around us. Man is subjected to thousands of these messages all of the time, but can only be attuned to one rate of vibration at a time. If he fine-tunes his own mechanism, the messages he receives receives will be more in line with the spiritual messages of nature. If he does not do this, he will bring in several stations at once, which will result in a garbled message. The more we fine-tune our vehicle, the more we can receive energies from even higher and finer natural planes. Everything is created by a word, and the word is a rate of vibration. The rate of vibration is the true name of the thing or body that it names. The human voice is very significant in all of this because each human voice has its own vibration. The Kabbalah says the great vibratory fiats of cosmic creation are the sacred names. He who is wise can unlock the mystery of his being. He who is foolish and unpurified and would use these names unwisely will be burned and thus destroyed by them. According to the Jewish tradition, the knowledge of Kabbalah was given by the angels in paradise to man at the time of his fall so that he could return to paradise. The Kabbalists taught the body of man consists of the consonants, which on a larger scale form the body of the grand man of the universe. The vowel letters are the planets, the Elohim, and these influence the lesser man through the corresponding centers within the human body. These vowels are divine and belong to God and are his name. 
God is considered the composite of all life energies. The manner in which each word is pronounced shows the mental, spiritual, and physical status of the body which forms the sound. Hence, it is its true name. When we raise our vibration to a certain high point, our word becomes a spark of life. Man uses his work and his voice to create this spark. The ancient wisdom teaches that man was born out of the mouth of God, who called him out of the darkness of space. This is the creative fire, and it is called the great name. In summary of the first part of the book, then, Manly Palmer Hall says this about the sacred magic of the Kabbalah. It cannot be learned. It must be evolved within the spiritual body of the aspiring seeker through right thought, right emotion, and right action. When the student has actually reached the point of self-mastery, then and only then the vowels assume their correct positions. The sacred centers are open, and the master's word, the key to all creation, is found in man. Then the student becomes a master of the sacred name. In part two of this exploration of Manly P. Hall's Sacred Magic of the Kabbalah, I will cover his discussion of the mystery of the numbers and the power of the invocation of the sacred names.